Yo, what is going on, you heartless hair cross? Before we get into today's video, I'm gonna give a big shout out to one of my sponsors, BCW Supplies, which obviously as a competitive player, the main product I use from them is their card sleeves, which having now having had used them in the last couple major events, I can say are definitely in some of my top sleeves I've ever used in my career as a Pokemon player. Um, super durable, super consistently cut, and uh, yeah, I've been super pleased uh, with those. Um, on top of that, they offer a multitude of card storage and deck box products over at their site, bcwsupplies.com. Uh, code AzulGG for 10% off. There's a link in the description below, so be sure to check that out for all your needs of those products. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Today, we are playing some games with ADP. Um, just a pretty standard list for what's been going around as far as ADP goes. It is a Rosa build with the custom catchers and the counter gain and all that. We don't play the Mimikyu. I think the Mimikyu is a little bit too inconsistent to be used, even in stuff like the Mirror Match. So no Mimikyu, not a big fan of it. Uh, but we got the rest of the gang here. This is uh, Diego Casiraga's list from San Diego. I don't think I changed a single card. I've been liking it just the way it is. It's been working very good for me, very well for me. I love the options this deck has in the format in the meta right now. Um, you know, I don't know if I'd ever play it at a major tournament, um, but you know, League Challenges, League Cups online on PDCGO, definitely one of uh, my favorite decks to play around with right now. You got a ton of options, a ton of ways to tackle different matchups, and then I cut a ton of like unique fun ways to beat stuff you know with the get loss and the frozen lock and the double absol which is definitely my favorite part about the whole deck is the two absol maybe i'm just on an absol trip right now because of uh tang growth but i'm a huge fan of the two absol uh in the deck for sure so yeah huge fan of not just this deck right now but this list specifically has been a lot of fun Definitely recommend it to you guys if you're looking to play around with some ADP. Try this list out, see how you like it yourselves. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's get into some games. All right, in this first one, we're up against some kind of Nido Queen deck. Um, I really don't want to put a rainbow on this because I don't know how hard Nido Queen can hit for. I completely forget. So we're gonna go ahead and go with Cynthia first and try and get a basic energy for my ADP. There it is. Oh, just how I wish. Cynthia is great. Trying to find a basic metal as a follow up. Um, if not, we'll go with the uh, special metal. Uh, but yeah, I completely forget how much damage Neo Queen can do. Um, I know it does some amount of damage that gets pretty high and pretty annoying. Um, but I know uh, probably not 280 damage. So I think we're fine with that. There's an immediate call for family. Uh, it's Malamar. Okay, it's Malamar and Nido Queen. All right, well, we top deck the rainbow. I'm just gonna go ahead and commit to that now. At this point, doesn't matter. Gonna fail that. Um, switch uh, and Chaotic Swell and Cynthia. And then we're gonna GX attack and then follow up with the ultimate ray onto something. Not sure yet, so we're not gonna put anything down. Just hit him with the ultimate creation. And then next turn, we'll figure it out. We might just go into another. EDP, depending on how many times you think we're going to be able to attack. We're definitely not getting one shot this turn. Our opponent is definitely not one shotting our ADP this turn. There we go. There's Nido Queen. Let's read the Nido Queen. Each evolution. So they're looking to do 260. So they cap out at 260. So if they get another shrine in play, they actually KO our ADP. There's another call for family. They need to get something like a Jirachi here. Um, if they play Jirachi, I guess it's possible they don't play Jirachi. Oh, it's going to be another NK. And because actually. Yeah, we're going to actually go ahead and just get a ADP ourselves. And Guzman. Uh, we're just going to set up another ADP here because actually Keldeo doesn't one shot Nido Queen. And we want to make sure we keep one shot on these guys. Um, don't really need a Cherish Ball for anything. Don't need a counter gain anything. Actually, we could just go ahead and throw the counter gain here because we're probably not going to be able to use it anymore. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get use out of the counter gain anymore. This is a pretty good hand. This can go here. And then we can go ahead and hit him with the ultimate ray for the knockout on the Nido Arena. Our opponent had a slow start. Um, and on top of that, we had a pretty good start. Well, we had like a... I, we didn't even have that ridiculously good of a start. We went Ultra Creation to Ultimate Ray. That's what the deck does. Um, so it should just be a dub here unless our opponent's got something sneaky uh, going on. And they would have to also top like a supporter at this point. Um, or something. Something to get them some cards. Um, it looks like they probably don't play Jirachi because they have chosen to not get Jirachi twice now with the All for Family. Um, so that means I would just assume that they don't play Jirachi. Um, and then this is why 
Uh, you want to play Jirachi. Their deck is just uh, looking pretty inconsistent, not going to lie. A pretty clunky deck going on without... Malamar can already have its issues with consistency when you play four Jirachi. So if you play zero Jirachi, you need a top deck Cynthia's like my man just did here. And top deck a Cynthia. So they're in business. We'll see, uh, see where it goes from here. Uh, if they do hypnosis us... Well, Psychic just went through the discard pile. That means I think we're getting hit then. I think we're definitely getting hit by the Power Lariat, or we're gonna get Hypnosis. It's one of the two. It's never anything else. It's always one of the two here. What are they doing? What do they got? Where are we going? Where are we going? What do you got? What are you doing? Hypnosis? Not Hypnosis? Maybe Hypnosis? Maybe not Hypnosis? Power Lariat, but then we one-shot you and then we're one attack away from being able to win the game. Do they have anything else spicy past that? Nope, it is the Hypnosis. Okay, we're asleep. This is where I can get weird. Um, and Caitlyn. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Grab a Cynthia. We need to draw a switch. We don't have to draw a switch. A switch would be nice. There's no switch there. I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up Keldeo. With the manual attaches. Gonna go ahead and throw down the Absol. Block this guy from retreating. And then pass over to our opponent. Uh, doesn't 100% stop him from retreating. He can still retreat, but... Um, they need an extra energy, which probably isn't going to be too hard for them to conjure up out of their, uh, their deck, or maybe they have to play a skateboard, I assume, because, like, I assume their pivot is a Malamar with an energy. Actually, I don't even know what they would possibly work off as a pivot in their, uh, in their deck. Yeah, I can't actually even, I don't even know what they would pivot off of. They're trying to have full evolutions on the bench, which I think they are, because that means they can actually get to, like, 270 one shot like a Mewtwo with a weakness card energy or a Rechizar or something like that. Like you have to take one shots with this deck, I assume. So hmm. let's play spell tag in this deck actually I kinda just realized. Spell tag would be pretty cool in here. Maybe they do play spell tag. So you can hit the higher numbers more easily. Because sure you can have a, your bench full of evolutions to get to 270. Then they gotta oh gosh I did not see that guy coming at all. That's a surprise. Thankfully, they're not quite knocking us out. We don't tell them. Um, yeah, this is something I did not expect in a deck that is already trying to set up so many evolutions on their bench. Who would play this guy in there? That's what I'm trying to wonder here. And it looks like... Oh, that's not a psychic. It looks like they have it, actually. I thought that would be a psychic energy right there. Um, and then they would be able to psychic recharge again and then actually knock me out. But it looks like no. They're not going to get the knockout here with the Gengar. It's going to have to be the Power Lariat to smack us for damage. And it actually worked oh oh okay i was like whoa double custom okay no no not double custom oh they're still going they can still get there and get themselves that uh psychic energy How are they? no what the heck they somehow have room for s shrines custom well it makes sense that they whiff the supporter for the first couple turns their deck is looking hella clunky um so i was hoping to find a way to use mellow if i whiffed this this turn i was hoping to find a way to use mellow and lana we don't have um we're not gonna have well, we could top deck it, besides top decking it. So we're into Cynthia to try and find Switch if we don't wake up. Four tails in a row is pretty unfortunate, but very possible. We'll see here. Okay, wake up here at the last second. Feels good. Um, catch to this guy, then go ahead and hit him with the Cynthia. Probably hard to treat if we get a Switch, that's even better. Um, we can also go, I call. Oh, we prize both my own mana, of course. E Absolute no. Nah. Great catcher. Hmm. Trying to just shoot. No, nah, we just go tag call. Take uh, nothing. Hard retreat into the ADP, and then yeah, the absolute. Now nah, we might want double double Jirachi. So we, all right, ultimate right for the knockout here. Uh, to one eighty. Um, take all those. Good. Yeah, and then we'll put a metal here. Get this guy ready to go. I don't. I'm still gonna set up this guy again, but a little bit less important. And then, you know, four prizes left. Two of them being Mallow and Lana. So there's a very good chance we get a Mallow and Lana here. Um, all right, our Mallow and Lanas are our last two prize cards, unless for some reason they're not in this list. But there's two Mallow and Lana in this list, so. Two Mallow and Lana's right here. Um, yeah, it was a good thing I actually... I didn't check my prize cards, but it was a good thing I definitely... Um, 
is spell tags. All right, I'm kind of intrigued by this deck now a little bit, not gonna lie. Uh, just a little bit intrigued by the possibilities of the Needle Queen deck now. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing I did play that. Didn't take the sick Caitlyn and Cynthia off there because I only had trainer cards left in my disc in my prizes, which means I actually would have not gotten knocked out and potentially lost the game if I had done that. They're down there reset stamp, so I don't think I'm getting reset stamp anymore. I can't imagine they somehow fit two reset stamp into this kind of build with Malamar. Um, they already somehow fit custom catchers and shrines. I mean, maybe. Sure. You know what? Why not? They probably have a second reset stamp, but they don't. Double custom. Bring up Malamar, knock him out. Um, yeah, super good thing I did not take a Caitlyn and Cynthia off that uh, second tag call there. Yeah, just short, just the 250. Um, and we are going to go double custom, bring up a Malamar. And then Ultimate Ray, knock out. Oh, got closer here at the end than I thought it would be. If they actually had a reset stamp, uh, could have been into uh, quite the top deck zone. And there we go. Last two prizes, two Mallow and Lanas. What are the odds? I don't know, but we get the dub anyways. So, uh, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Okay, we're up against the Malamar here in this one. Another Malamar. Back to back Malamars. The first one was Needle Queen, though, so I feel like we're not going to be up against another Needle Queen Malamar. If I had to guess, we're not going to be hitting back to back uh, Needle Queen Malamars here. Um. I'll definitely take the mulligan, and we'll definitely put the Absol in play here, and then pass over to our opponent. Um, so yeah, Absol, super strong against Malamar, for sure. Um, so we're already in a great spot, opening that one uh, Absol there. There is the Trevnor, Ooh, and Agent Rachi. Um, hmm. So Trevnor, uh, pretty good in this matchup for our opponent. Ooh, he's getting rid of the Viridian Force instead of using it. Interesting. Actually, I'm confused now. I guess these three cards must be really, really good to not utilize the Viridian Forest turn one. Um, unless they have second Viridian, like if their hand is Lily Viridian Forest, all right, they got me. Um, which it could be, Viridian Forest Lily. Otherwise, I'm hard pressed to see this Viridian Forest not hitting the uh, in the field at some point. Um, it is, Viridian Forest and Lily. Okay, you know what, I take it all back. It's, it's fine. But then they should have gone Viridian Forest away Viridian Forest get a psychic treasure away a psychic grab a Tina treasure away a Tina grab an ink gang so they have been like one card deeper with a psychic in their discard pile one card one less card in the deck with a psychic in their discard pile this also looks like it's gonna end up working out for our opponent here and um, they did have to use a switch which is definitely one something I like to see um, and then this guy is gonna have an extra retreat cost this game as well um, so I'm still fine with the way the game is currently developing um, Still setting up to be able to GX attack here with uh, what's his face on turn two, and then kind of cruise from there. There's a Cynthia grab. I definitely want to replace the stadium if I can, though. That's going to be one of my main goals this turn to get rid of that for first. There's Cat as well. All right, Stella was first, and I guess we're just taking the Caitlyn and Cynthia. Um, gonna ditch a metal, I guess. Doesn't feel ridiculously good, but uh, I can live with it, I guess. Three, ooh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to live with it. I, I can live with it, I can live with it. Um, hmm. I don't kinda wanna waste my next Caitlyn at Cynthia, so I think I wanna go like this. Let me take the cards again. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go like this. This out. <clears throat> this guy down. <clears throat> Touch a metal energy. And we could escape four, but that doesn't make any sense really ever. So I think we just go ahead and pass to our opponent. We could go get another Absol, but I think I might want to get a Keldeo instead at some point. So we are just going to pass to our opponent. Like, all right, do you have um, you have a way to attack with Tina this turn? Actually, if they attack with Tina this turn, I don't think I'd really care. Um, yeah, I don't really think I really care if they attack with Giratina this turn. I guess the one thing I could have gotten out of my deck would have been a, another Jirachi in case they do kill the Jirachi, but I don't really want two Jirachi in play at all times anyways, so yeah, they're setting up the Tina. This is actually what you don't want to set up in this matchup. You want to try and set up the uh, Trevnor or, and they actually had the Viridian Forest on turn one. They wanted, they should have gone after the Tina Chomp and put the Fighting Energy on that. That was definitely the way to go in this matchup. Whenever you can get the Fighting Energy on the Tina Chomp before, your opponent has a chance, like whatever you can get access to the fighting energy and put it on Tina Chomp, that is always 100% what you want to do in this matchup. 
and our opponent maybe doesn't know that, so they didn't go for it. Um, they're definitely gonna get punished for it here. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely the strat the route you want to go down in this matchup. Is you gotta get rid of the big ADP after they GX attack. And I'm about a GX attack, and our opponent is not gonna be prepared to remove my ADP from play or remove its energy. Because you can also just like take away its energy with um Trevnor. You can use Trevnor's GX attack. You can go linear attack into Calamitous Slash, or you can go GG end uh, if nothing else works out. And then you just take the energy away from the ADP. Don't let me Ultimate Ray. If ADP goes Ultra Creation into Ultimate Ray, Malamar loses pretty much every time. Um, but if I don't get the Ultra Creation into Ultimate Ray, there's definitely a chance to, for Malamar to win still. But if I do get the Ultra Creation into Ultimate Ray, that's it. Pack them up. Game's pretty much over. Doable, but not great. There's a retreat and a psychic recharge. Um, seemed a little unnecessary. I'm actually confused by their goal here and pass over to us. Okay. Was no goal the whole time. I'm going to take. I don't think anything to get knocked out anytime soon, so Rose is a little slow. I call does give me Cynthia and Kaylin and another. Uh, Malolana, we already have the communication for the Keldeo, so this seems best to me. Mm, I think I actually want to go ahead and, well, no, they're not going to do it. But like, in case they reset stamp it, I was like, wait a second, this is Malamar. They're not reset stamping me. We're fine. Yep. Go ahead, GX attack, and go over to our opponent, and yeah, like I said, I, know, I think we have this one pretty much locked up. I guess we'll kind of wait and see. Our opponent still has some potential plays to be made, but I don't think it's going to matter here. Especially now that we have back-to-back -back Malo and Lana's to be used, we can Malo and Lana away our top deck, and I can tag call for an ADP or the Guzma and Hala plus the other Malo and Lana, and then we Malo and Lana away the uh, top deck plus our ADP or Guzma and Hala have that second Malo and Lana communication for a Keldeo, and then we can go attach to our ADP. Uh, heal our guy with Malo and Lana, go to the bench with the heal, then we bring him back up, and then we knock out the Tina after we healed our damage. And actually, they're not even set up to attack yet. They're still short in energy. So it's very possible that they don't even attack us this turn, and we don't even have to Malo and Lana. There's the hard retreat, so I'm hoping they have an energy here out of hand. Keep this game going. No. Oh, no. The Psychic Recharge should always happen here to the Jirachi. This is smart. But do they just not have... Oh no, they just might not be able to attack us this turn. That's a big deal. We pretty much auto win the game if they can't attack us this turn. Oh goodness. All right, so tag call. Didn't even have to happen anymore, but kind of just defaulted to it. Let me get these guys um, away. All right. We have a lot of basic waters in our hand, so actually it might be hard to set up the kill. Oh, we got two more. Keldeo. And bench Keldeo, attach a metal to the active. Ultimate Ray for the knockout. And I'm going to go ahead and get these two. I think I want to save one water in the deck so I can actually accelerate that. So when did that make any sense, actually? Don't listen to me. Always get all of them. Put them all in play. Um, so they still have a chance, actually. They can knock out our active with um, Tina Chomp here. They can go Tina Chomp, knock this guy out. Uh, in which case would make the game potentially close. Yeah, there's a spell tag for four. And they can actually Distortion Door, put ten on our um, Keldeo. Oh, but they won't be able to fit Mimikyu, Keldeo. Yeah, they can't quite get everything. But they can KO this with Tina Chomp this turn. So it is actually still possible for our opponent to uh, come back in this game. Oh, uh, it's not going to be through Distortion Door. Um, so they're going to need a little bit more than that. Here is a Distortion Door. A little bit... A little bit too little, though, I think. Uh, we'll see. I think somebody can come back here with that. Distortion Door. Take this knockout. And we're just going to look for two custom catchers at this point to try and KO a Malamar or a Jirachi. So even if they send something big in our way, like a Tina Chomp, they're still able to take a knockout and draw our last couple prize cards. There's a communication. There's the Tina Chomp. But like I said, that's, they should have tried to set that up turn one. That should have been their turn one guy. There's a Mimikyu, shut off the ability on Keldeo, so then Tina Chomp can actually KO Keldeo. Um, Alright, so they are going to go around that game plan then. So now, they can go Tina Chomp KO this guy, and then Tina Chomp KO this guy. 
but they're giving us a third ultimate ray. I guess they don't know all of our basic energies in our hand, so we could theoretically set up another Keldeo. Not gonna happen because all of our basic energy is in our hand, but if, if it wasn't, it could. Fortunately, it is. There's a great catcher. Maybe they're actually gonna be bringing up our Keldeo. Well, no, they don't have to play just because they took it. Actually, they're still short an energy to attack. All right, Giratina has made his way back to the active. <laughs> Still short in energy to attack, our opponent is. And, um, yeah. I mean, they can attack a Tina Chomp next turn to get the funny energy. We're going to be looking for, um, I think I am going to heal with Mao and Lana here. We're going to be looking for a second Absol to make it, like, harder for our opponent to actually do anything on their turn. I'm going to go ahead and hit him up with the, do I want to hit him up with this? Yeah, I'm going to hit him up with this. Heal before we run out of ways to heal keep this guy because if i get a communication i want to be able to communication a pokemon away but there's also cynthia i'm taking uh and i'm gonna try and get an absol here if he is in there i actually don't know if second absol is in the deck but we're gonna find out hey he's there that's cool go ahead and grab second absol here make it that much harder for our opponent to move there unfortunate uh or their jirachi here and uh that's created Quite the unfortunate circumstance for our opponent here. And Ultimate Ray punched this Giratina. We could have attached to Absol actually to set up Absol because we still have both rainbows left, I believe. Yeah, so I actually I probably should have attached the Absol and plan to use Shadow Seeker or have the potential to use Shadow Seeker uh, coming up. I think that would have been fine, actually. So they have to throw all four damage counters here on the ADP because they have to try and take the knockout with the Tina Chomp on our active. Um, there we go. Spell tag to our active. Go ahead, give me two prize cards. That is not, and that is also, oh, that is a Custom Catcher. So now we have, if they do KO us, we have Rosa for Custom Catcher. So this game is pretty much over. Um, our opponent played the opening games super sloppily. Uh, even after realizing we were playing ADP, they chose to try and set up stuff that doesn't give them a chance to win the game. And now they are completely, uh, I, they can't, they can't have a game plan around that, can they? Two energy here. Nah, it's impossible. Yep, I don't know why they, they like instinctively went, okay, fob of that, instead of going, well, what if we get a draw supporter? Now they can't play this draw supporter, and that should be game. They're also out of switches, so it's going to be hard enough as it is. Coming back with the Shadow Impact again. <laughs> um, so I don't think our opponent quite has an understanding of how to tackle this matchup. Hopefully they learned from these games, um, and don't go down the route of defaulting to Giratina uh, next time. Um, and, you know, give themselves a chance to, uh, to win the game. Although, actually, at the beginning of the game, I don't know, did I even show the ADP before? You know what, they maybe were fine to go with the Giratina route until I showed them ADP. Um, but yeah, there's the pass over to me, and that's going to be it. Take another dub here. Sonic Edge over this Jirachi. Knock him out. Goodbye, Jirachi. And that's going to do it for this video with the ADP deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, one of my favorite decks to play especially builds like this where there's a lot of stuff going on a lot of different uh game plans and strategies and routes you can take to win games it's super cool super fun i have a whole ton of fun playing this deck uh no matter the matchup there's just a lot of cool stuff you can do to create win conditions and yeah a lot of fun double absol is really cool so i recommend you guys do the double absol as well um but yeah that's gonna do it for this video hope you enjoyed it if you didn't, give it a like. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe. Have a good day. Thanks for watching, and peace.